All right, uh, so in this video, we're going to take a look at two related books. Um, so this first one here is called Magic Made Easy. You can see the big title on the front cover here, as well as this uh, illustration of a boy with a magic wand. Um, and there's also this note, possibly from a library. On the spine, it says the title, and then the author, which is Larry Kettlecamp, and then the publisher, which is the Morrow uh, Library Edition, it looks like. Got a stamp for it on the back cover as well. Um, all right, so let's open it up. Uh, we can see a stamp from a previous uh, library or an elementary school, it looks like. And here's the title page. It's called uh, Magic Made Easy, written and illustrated by Larry Kettlecamp, and then published in 1954 in New York by the William Morrow and Company. And here's the copyright. And then the first page. We can see this silly illustration of a magician. It says, anyone can be a magician if he is willing to practice, but do not expect a trick to work exactly right the first time you do it. With patience and practice, you will be able to perform many of the tricks in this book, and will have fun amusing people with them. And we can see there's more illustrations here. It says, a great many surprising tricks can be done using only pennies, paper, drinking glasses, water, or simple things made from a piece of wood or cardboard. You can find many of the things you need around the house. The first few tricks uh, show how your eyes can be made to play pranks on you. Here is a stunt. You can see, uh, continues here, it says, you can do with the mirror. Get a small square one if possible. Your mother may have one in her purse that she will lend you. At the bottom of this page, you can see some large black marks. Hold the mirror up on its edge, just above the marks, as shown in the illustration on the opposite page. The mirror reflects the marks, and you can read the word, hi. So, pretty simple trick here, but if you place a mirror here, it'll reflect these black bars and form the word hi. And you can see an illustration of the, the boy doing that on this page here. So, not a very impressive trick. And here's a, another trick that many people probably already know. Uh, would you like to make a pencil look as if it were made of rubber? With a little practice, you can make an ordinary pencil seem to bend in the middle. Get a fairly long pencil, hold it sideways at one end as shown in the drawing. Pinch it loosely between your thumb and first finger. Now shake your hand slightly up and down as fast as you can. If you are holding the pencil loosely by one end, the other end will begin to move up and down a little, but the middle of the pencil will seem to stay in about the same place. As long as you keep jiggling uh, your hand, the pencil will seem to bend as if it were a piece of rubber. Um, and so we can see an illustration of that here. And a lot of people learn to do this without ever reading about it. Here's another one, just a illusion. The next trick is always funny and you can do it anywhere by using your own fingers. Hold your fingers about two inches in front of your eyes with the tips touching each other and forming a straight line. Try not to look at your fingers, but look at an object a little distance away. Even though you are not looking directly at your fingers, you can still see them. You will also see something that looks very much like a sausage stuck between your fingertips. Pull the tips of your fingers apart just a little, as a girl in the picture is doing, and the sausage will seem to be floating in the air. Of course, there is really nothing there at all. The ends of your fingers seem to run together to form the sausage. Your eyes have played a trick on you again. Everyone will laugh when you show them how to do this. So this book is a... Oh, here's a famous one about... Um, the next one is a, this trick where you can make it look like you're taking your thumb off just by using your other thumb on your other hand. So this is just a classic silly trick. Um, not very impressive. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody these days that would be fooled by this. Um, and that's uh, pretty much the caliber of all the tricks in this book. Um, look at the drawing of a bicycle at the bottom of the page. You can make its wheels seem to turn as if it were rolling along the sidewalk. Hold the book in your hand and stare at the handlebars of the bicycle. Now move the book around and around in small circles while you continue to look at the handlebars. In a moment, the bicycle will seem to roll forward. So that's just sort of an optical illusion. And then this one here, it's a, a trick 
uh, called The Mummy's Finger, and it's just where you put your finger through a hole in a box and make it look like it's a, a, a sort of severed finger in this box. And you can use a watercolor paint and all sorts of things to make it look like a mummy's finger. So the image shows him surprising his friend there. And then this is just a balancing trick um, with silverware here and a match to confuse people using the center of gravity. And then this trick is to uh, uh, snap a rubber band to uh, between two fingers. And so these, these are all just uh, pretty accessible tricks that uh, pretty much anybody can do. This one is showing a water in a cup staying there if a piece of paper is covering it and it's turned upside down. Um, this one is a little more elaborate. It's just a strange trick that involves creating this dial. And then this is another balancing trick with a belt in the center of gravity. And uh, this, this book, it sort of culminates in um, a sort of string of tricks that are put together to so that you can put on a small show. Um, and it involves this magic wand and having a fake magic wand and all of this. And then also doing a, a false tie of a handkerchief around the wand. Um, here's a trick as well, uh, showing what happens if you cut a Mobius strip. Uh, down the center, and it forms these uh, linked chains. And then this is a trick to allow you to appear to cut a ribbon without actually cutting it. And that's the end. So it says, I hope that from this book you will have learned at least a few tricks very well. Always do the tricks that you enjoy performing and that you know will amuse others. It is then that you will get real satisfaction from being, being a good magician. All right, so that's uh, Magic Made Easy um, by Larry Kettlecamp. And uh, we've got another book here, too, so I'm going to grab that one. This is a, a magic book that somebody just gave me as a gift. Um, it's got this plain red cover, um, and the only exterior markings are on the spine. It's called 400 Tricks You Can Do by Howard Thurston. Then nothing on the back. And just the uh, publishing house at the base of the spine, which is Blue Ribbon Books. So this one has a, a lot more tricks in it, and it's uh, for sort of a, a an older audience. Um, so the tricks are a little more interesting and complicated and uh, more impressive if you can master them. And this was published in 1940. Alright, and here's a preface. It says, In the compilation of this book, selection has been made from nearly 2,000 available tricks in order to obtain the most workable and most up-to-date material. They are intended not only for the beginner in magic, but also for the advanced amateur magician who will find many new and interesting items in the following pages. In order that this compendium of magic may be used to best advantage, the contents has been divided into chapters, each section dealing with tricks with one particular type of article. As there are certain tricks which are difficult to classify, they have been placed in the chapters where they seem properly to belong, but if they hold any claims to belonging to another division of the book, they are mentioned and indexed under the other heading as well. The various chapters have been arranged in alphabetical order according to their headings. Here's a brief biography of the author, Howard Thurston. Howard Thurston, the world's master magician, was born in Columbus, Ohio, July 20, 1869. When he was a small boy, Alexander Herman, the great magician of that day, came to Thurston's home city, and young Howard attended the performance. That experience awoke in him a love and enthusiasm for the art of magic that never left him. From that time on, his great ambition was to become a magician and to follow in the footsteps of the great Herman. So that was apparently his hero as a child. And here's the first volume, so there's two volumes in this. The first volume is 200 tricks you can do. Here's the table of contents for that volume. And then a, an introduction as well. The introduction says, The purpose of this book is to explain clearly, concisely, and conveniently 200 mystifying tricks that can be performed by the average person. Magic is not difficult to perform, and digital dexterity is not essential to the impromptu magician. 
The object in performing tricks is not to display skill, but to mystify. Many of the best tricks and illusions are performed by comparatively simple means. None of the tricks in this book requires elaborate apparatus, nor are any of them beyond the skill of an average person. Therefore, the reader can concentrate his efforts upon the actual presentation of the various mysteries without having to spend time or money in the technical details. Presentation is the important part of every trick. The best tricks can be spoiled by poor presentation. On the other hand, very simple tricks can be turned into excellent mysteries by good presentation. Alright, so we're just going to flip through and see some of these things. So the first chapter is about ball tricks. Here it says, uh, a ring must be worn on the second finger of the right hand, a thread about an inch long is attached to the ring, and the other end is wound around a small tack, which is embedded in the ball. When the hand is held with the fingers pointing upwards, the ball hangs out of sight behind the hand. When the hand is swung upwards and turned slightly forward, the ball will appear instantly at the fingertips. And we've got the vanishing ball, the diminishing ball, here's the self-rolling ball, the aerial ball, the mysterious ball, and so on. And then we've got chapter two, which is about card tricks, um, which are the majority of uh, famous uh, magic tricks, I believe. This is showing how to do a trick involving a color-changing pack. This is the effect. The magician exhibits a pack of cards with the joker on the face, the bottom. He rifles the end of the pack and shows that it contains red cards only. He blows on the pack and rifles it again. This time the cards are all black. He blows on the pack once more and this time the cards become both red and black. The pack may be thoroughly examined. And then it gives you a method on how to perform that trick or create that effect. And so we've got coin tricks. And then handkerchief tricks with a diagram here. We've got match tricks, uh, and then just a section for miscellaneous tricks. Chapter 12 is pencil tricks, chapter 14 is spirit tricks, and then we've got sugar tricks, we've got thimble tricks, so all sorts of different types, and then here's volume 2, starting with card tricks. So I'm just sort of flipping through and I saw some of these illustrations here for different types of card tricks and then this one is showing how to make a, a circle of cards and then also a rosette um, so uh, we can see those drawn out here it's just different forms of laying out the cards and you can see there's quite a few illustrations in here to um, illustrate the different tricks and their methods. Um, so now we're in a section for some number tricks and then this is some optical illusion tricks. Um, so this is for uh, a trick called uh, mystic circles. It says the circles shown in the drawing are obviously imperfect. No one would accuse them of being true circles for they are almost egg-shaped, at least they appear to be. So these circles in this image um, appear oblong. It says, but you can safely state that they are perfect circles. This fact can be demonstrated with the aid of a compass or by laying coins in the center of the circles. The curving checkerboard effect confuses the eyes. So these uh, circle rings around the exterior here are, uh, are perfect circles, but they look oblong or egg-shaped. And then here's another optical illusion that says, here's a way to make a person see a ghost. Tell him to gaze steadily at the picture shown herewith. He must look at it for, so that that's the picture. He must look at it for about half a minute under a strong light, keeping his eyes on the tiny dot in the picture. Then he must turn his gaze toward the wall. As he looks there, a large ghostly image of the picture will appear before his eyes. Um, so that just has to do with sort of like a, um, a retina, a, physics, I suppose. And then this is uh, another optical illusion where the middle lines are supposed to appear bent, but they aren't. And in this one, um, if you cross your eyes, the bird flies into the mouth of this uh, snake here. And then this one is supposed to appear spinning. And yeah, so we're getting pretty close to the end. There's just some paper tricks here, some more spirit tricks. And then table tricks. Um, 
There's some thimble tricks as well. So that shows you how to lay out some sticks, it looks like. And that's it. So uh, that's 400 tricks you can do by Howard Thurston. And then again, the uh, first book we looked at here was Magic Made Easy by Larry Kettlecamp. And uh, all right, so thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, leave us a like and a comment and let us know what you want to see. And thanks for watching. Bye.